Howdy folks, Bob here again, and uh, yep, today, um, what we're going to do here on uh, some, we're going to do some outdoor, once again, engineering on, uh, we're going to do it on my old Plymouth, and uh, once again, and we're going to, uh, we're going to do some work on the engine here, I've been putting this off for, uh, I don't know, probably about it since last year and uh so uh today was a little overcast and uh since it was less than uh you know it was less than 100 degrees out today i figured you know it's probably about time i take a look at this and try and get this handled So uh, what we're going to do today is, uh, I've already done the um, passenger side over here last year, but today I'm going to pull off the driver's side valve cover and um, for two reasons. One, I've been chasing a ticking sound on the back side of the engine uh, for, I don't know, probably five years since I rebuilt this engine five years ago. And two, uh, the biggest reason is that... Uh, these, um, let's just say, uh, overseas aftermarket chrome valve covers, um, they are not engineered correctly. And uh, I don't know if I've mentioned this on another video, I may have, but uh, basically, in a nutshell, this, uh, this ledge here all the way around these gas, these uh, valve covers is um, engineered, it's, it's not wide enough. This is only, what, maybe, I don't know, maybe a quarter of an inch, maybe a little over an eighth of an inch wide. And on the factory ones, uh, the va factory valve covers, this flange is about half inch wide. And so what happens is uh, when you try and glue the valve cover gaskets on and put them on, then when you try, when you go to bolt them down, down on the back side and on the front side, because this distance from this bolt to this bolt this area right in here because they now if this tab from the manufacturer would had been here then there wouldn't be an issue but the tabs way over here so what happens is the uh, gasket because this surface is rounded and it's where it's rounded is actually where it's pushing pressure on the head so when you bolt it down it squishes the valve cover into the head off of the uh, off of the valve cover and then it leaks like uh, you know it leaks like an open faucet so I did I did everything to uh, to try and fix it I put the like I normally do I put the gaskets on I let the gasket sealer dry and um, I even glued the and I'll show you when I pull this off I actually glued the gasket on then I glued underneath it to the valve cover to try and keep the gasket from squishing in and it worked on it did not work on the passenger side so it worked on the driver side for all this time because it was a used gasket and it already had a it already had a uh, indention from the head so that caught and it allowed that gasket to stay in place rather than slip inside because it already had it already been used a couple times <laughs> and uh, hopefully I can use it one more time so um, I'm gonna pull these off here and, uh, and then um, then I'm going to get the, I've already made some tabs like I did the other side. Then we're going to, we're going to uh, weld those tabs on. And then uh, while I have it apart, I'm going to see if I can identify where the tick's coming from. And then, uh, then I'm going to put it back together. But i um, not sure how much of this I'm going to film. This is basically, this part here is just to, to show the deficiencies in these valve covers. And I think I uh, had a friend of mine on a big block Chevy. Um, I think he's had the same issue on the aftermarket ones. He bought a set of tall ones that would clear uh, the um, roller rocker arms, which is what I've got. And uh, I think his did the same thing. So it seems to be, uh, um, it, no, it doesn't, doesn't matter uh, what manufacturer uh, vehicle that you have, whether it be 
you know, Mopar or Chevrolet. It seems to be the manufacturer of these uh, aftermarket valve covers. So, basically, it's pretty easy. You know, all you gotta do is, and they're already pretty loose. Like I said, I did these, I put new heads on, and I didn't post that. I didn't post that video, and I'm gonna try and do that, even, even if I have to do it slightly condensed version, but chasing the tick, I replaced, uh, I replaced the heads. I thought maybe it was a valve sticking from when I had the um, heads machined, and uh, so I pulled the heads, had it, found another set of 906 heads, and had them machined, and took them off, and then put these on, put these heads on, and when I took the other ones off, lo and behold, there was nothing wrong with the heads, so I thought, at one point, I thought it was the rocker shafts and the rocker arms, because I didn't have the factory, um, I didn't have the factory spacers that went in between the, the four spacers, so I made my own. I always thought that was the issue, so I replaced those, and uh, I put roller rockers on it. Now I use the uh, 440 source, don't use the uh, aftermarket ones. And um, I'm going to do another video about why not to use those and why those are uh, destroying people's engines. And um, yeah, so let's just uh, get this apart real quick. And, uh, and then we'll take a look and I'll show you what I'm working with here. Hopefully I can get all these up. I did use uh, those little chrome pieces that spread the uh, force out and those definitely help but a magnet sometimes these things are I'm trying to be careful and not drop these under the car because uh, there's nothing but leaves and pine straw underneath there and uh, you drop something it's kind of hard to uh, locate it whoa so actually I got smart and started using my magnet which is so far working rather well let's see what we can do with this last one here Almost. And it's caught by the frame. Excellent. Okay. So that went well. Better than expected. And let's see what we have. Let's see if I can actually save this valve cover gasket again. like we might be able to oh boy okay so here's what I was talking about you can see underneath there which is not a good thing because that stuff breaks off goes down into your oil pump pickup you know then it gets all blocked up but um, you can see this is where well, let me let me set the camera down well anyway you can see the where this was a used gasket where it was already indented and right here is normally is the offending area here and here this length because it's the distance between here and this tab had this tab been here everything would have been fine but without putting this goop and without this gasket already being reused and catching the head as soon as you put pressure on these bolts pushes this in and creates a big gap right here which leaks like a, you know like an open faucet like there's no gasket there so uh today i'm gonna i've made these tabs that go here here and i put one right up here and i gotta weld them in and uh like i said luckily i only got to do this one so 
Um, gee, there goes another store-bought Mustang with aftermarket pipes on it. So impressive. Let's get that out of the way. And here is my roller rockers that I put on. And every time I think that I don't know that one Some might be a little loose I hear it making noise I'm gonna have to check out this one here and see if it's too loose or if maybe there's essentially an issue with the uh, with the lifter uh, I'm probably gonna start it up for just a minute and let it run see if I can hear if this is uh, the one making the noise it sounds like it's coming from the back of the engine so uh, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna film that because right now I'm trying to get the uh, I'm trying to get the um, gasket situation figured, you know, fixed. I'm trying to, got to get these, uh, uh, I got to get those tabs welded on. And uh, so I'll show you the tabs here in just a moment. I'm going to cut this camera off. So then I'll go over and get my welder set up and show you the tabs. All right. So we've, uh, I've got to the point here where I'm getting ready to try out my uh, my little titanium Harbor Freight welder and uh, I've already used it I know it works well um, here's the um, here's the little tabs that I made and here's where now I didn't I don't necessarily know if I needed the center one but I'm putting one in the center anyway um, and yeah I've got two of them I'll put one in the bottom and one in the top uh, but here is the offending area here. So that one and that one uh, are the important ones because that's where the gasket slips in because of the space there. So um, I'm going to do the one in the center first. Um, here is where I made the. Uh, here's where I made these from. This was a. <laughs> this panel is the roof. That came off of back half of a car that I purchased in order to repair my Challenger. I bought a entire back half of a car and cut the they cut it they cut the back half off and I took the whole quarter panel trunk area and fixed my total Challenger. And I didn't do a video on that, but I do have some clips. Maybe I'll put it together one day. So uh, I was letting my uh, welding helmet. Uh, I don't know there's a battery in it and I wanted to make sure that the battery had some charge in it so uh, I'm getting ready to test this thing out here and I'm gonna try it on this panel first that's why I brought it over here and uh, have pretty much the same settings because the last time I used the welder was the last project was that other valve cover the passenger side so
working. Okay, looks like it's working pretty good now. I know uh, this is a uh, Fox score welder, and uh, I know those look, that one looks pretty good. That one looks pretty good. I'm kind of getting the hang of it. That one looks all right. These, I was a little too hard on. Of course, there's oil and there's paint, and that's why that bubbled up. That one looks all right. This one I was a little hot on. But the point is, uh, the reason why I have to go a little hotter on the machine is because this is stainless steel, the valve cover, and these little brackets are just, uh, you know, ordinary steel. It's high strength steel because it came off the roof, but it's real thin. So the differences in the two uh, types of metals, I need it, I need the flame a little hotter to penetrate into the stainless. And, uh, but it wants to blow out the, you can see it's thin too, it wants to blow out the And see, yep, that's perfect. It's just penetrating the stainless. So, yep, that's perfect. All right, cool. So, uh, I'm going to do the uh, other. I'm going to put, like I said, one here, one here, and one in the middle on the top side, and that's going to be it. And uh, so, let me get that done real quick. this uh, square and basically all I did was use the square to keep the uh, bracket from pushing into the wrong spot. The nice thing about using the thin metal for the brackets is you can bend it. So once you get it in place and they have to be thin um, because they'll hit the valve springs um, so I purposely made them thin so once I got them welded in I could kind of bend them a little bit can't have them sticking too far down into the head they got to be just maybe a little a little longer than flush you can always grind them down but they can't stick too far down and they can't stick out because they'll hit the valve spring so it looks like I got that one in place put a tax a couple tacks on it and then I'll get the square out of the way To be breathing in too much of those fumes, it kind of stinks. Fuck score, and got to get a little bit more on the flat pole, and I'm good. Ah. Perfect. Two more to go. So we need a short one.
Oops, kind of supposed to be having my welding gloves on, but you know, I must have the settings pretty close because the spatter is pretty minimal. But I'll throw my gloves on because I haven't, I haven't gotten burned yet. I've got three sets of gloves on. I really don't want to get burned today, so let's continue on. burn through that last hole. Yeah, I'll tell you what, this burns through this thin metal like real easy. That's pretty good though. All right, one more to go. You can see how much better my welds are getting. I know they're not perfect, but um, compared to the first one I did, um, they got much better. So these uh, magnetic triangles come in handy. You can do, you know, you're welding two pieces together in a 90, welding these little brackets on like I'm doing, works well. And uh, looks like I made one extra bracket for some reason, and I guess I'll go ahead and use it. I use this uh, Hobart. I use this Hobart uh, nozzle gel, and it looks like it's still plenty on there. It keeps the slag from sticking to the nozzle. call that good because it's really burning through those uh really burning through these brackets real easy Okay. Well, that was successful. It was a long time coming. And that last one only got a little sloppy. Started burning through it. That's a pretty good little welder, though. I like it. Once you get it, once you get whatever you're doing dialed in, 
like I said, I had to, it's hard to weld stainless and soft steel, but I got it done. I got, as long as it stayed smooth, it stayed smooth on most of them. The first one was a little bubble gummy, but not bad. So, that one, that one was pretty good. That one, you can see I burned through there on the end a little bit. And then that one, it's just so thin. But, you know, as long as you got, you know, as long as it's holding on the edge, there isn't much pressure on these brackets. It's just to hold the gasket from sliding in. That's all it has to do. And once it, once the gasket grabs, of course you can see, you know, the gap there is probably a little bit too thin for that gasket. So I can either, you know, some gaskets that you get actually, uh, you know, they're, this gasket seems to be as thick all the way. Now, actually, this area here, and that's why they, that's, I think that's why these gaskets bend. This is skinnier than this. Okay, this, this gasket from between those two bolt holes is thicker, about an eighth of an inch thicker than between here and here. And that's one of the problems, the reason why the gasket moves. Nothing you can do about that. Um, maybe somebody knows a better way of doing this. Uh, please comment below. Uh, the best way I know to do it is to just avoid these uh, inexpensive uh, aftermarket overseas valve covers altogether because they will not seal. This is just not enough. And I can take you up uh, real quick. So. That's uh, the back half. I put the entire back half of that car on. I might post a video on it. Um, but uh, and I may have shown this before, but I'm going to show it because it's this video. But you can see how much wider the stock surface is. You can see, see how much wider that is. It's almost three-eighths of an inch wide, almost a half right there. And, of course got this this is my original engine so you can see see how that's a it's almost it's almost a half an inch wide and it does have a little indentation where the factory if I can right there you can see they punched it so that grabs the gasket and you know keeps it from slipping in but it's just the fact that this surface right here is much larger I think it's maybe because of that indentation as well uh, this is the original engine for my Plymouth the only one that I took the valve cover off so one day I might put it in and transplant that engine that's in it into something else but Oh, that's a, another video for another day. Like I said, uh, the best way to keep from getting into this scenario is just to, at least on the Mopar stuff, is just to uh, probably just to avoid these altogether. I had to beat the ends out a little bit. Um, they weren't long enough because those 440 source, um, either that or if you're going with the uh, 440 source rocker arms, which when I bought these were very reasonable. And uh, my reason why those uh, aftermarket ones are on uh, one is that um, I have Mickey Thompson's, which uh, for some reason uh, he doesn't like any of the good stuff. I don't know why. He doesn't like Kragers, which are badass. He doesn't like uh, Mickey Thompson valve covers, which I have and I like. But with these 440 source, this shaft sticks out here it's only a sixteenth of an inch but in the back it's an eighth of an inch in the back so the shaft sticks past the hold down and then the valve cover you can see that right there the valve cover won't clear this right here you can see I clearance these right here for the Mickey Thompson and for those um, both the front and the back you can see that one there's as well but they wouldn't go on uh, and then uh, so yeah so I'm gonna adjust 
this one here, which seems to be just a touch loose. I've already pulled all the lifters out, so I know there's nothing wrong with the lifters. And I know the cam's not wiped out. This one is, seems just a little bit loose. I can feel it moving. The other ones are all good. So I'm gonna give it just like a quarter of a turn or so and uh, put some preload on it. And then uh, when the sealant's dry tomorrow, I'll put it all back together. So thanks again, folks. I hope you get something out of this. Uh, if you got any comments or different ways to, uh, to um, I mean, different solutions for this uh, issue, let me know. I uh, would appreciate it. And uh, like and subscribe, watch my other videos, and uh, have a great day. Take care.